Gran Turismo 7 just released a new feature called the Data Logger, and it's a tool that helps you analyze your lap times and improve as a driver. And in this video, I will show you exactly how you can use it to get faster, along with a couple of areas you really should pay close attention to. First, we just have to make sure that we watch the replay, and this is the foundation of every time trial. So understanding it is absolutely critical. Do not jump into the session and just start doing your laps because this is probably not going to help you to improve. Take the time to study the replay. See what the fastest drivers in the world are doing and try to copy their approach. And it's actually as simple as that. Now it's time to start driving and we want to do just about five to 10 laps, depending on how much time you have. Ideally, you just want to spend roughly 30 minutes doing so, not more. And after that, we really need to start with the analysis. Now we're going into the technical analysis of this video. Let's say we put in a fairly decent lap time. The next step is to open the data logger at the bottom of the screen and wait for the graph to generate. Once it loads, you can switch between a few different views and choose exactly what type of data you want to be displayed. For example, I usually like to select the throttle and the brake so I can clearly see how much braking am I using. And on top of that, you can also check the car setups and other detailed information if you want to go deeper into the analysis. Now for the important part, click on the yellow box and open one of the laps from the world leaderboards. I picked a few different laps before, but I really like this one because it's clean with just some of the cleanest inputs that I've seen so far. When the graph loads, you can immediately start to see the lines clearly. And this is going to be our foundation. Now we need to start looking at differences in lines. And in this video, I will really go into detail of each corner and explain exactly what is happening. For example, you can clearly see that in turn one, our reference takes a slightly wider entry. This allows for a better and faster exit. So if we combine this with a replay analysis, the difference becomes even clearer. You can see the reference using more track on the way into the corner, cutting the curb, and of course, getting back onto the power earlier because of that wider approach into the corner and therefore carrying more speed on the way out of the corner. And our difference is already 3 tenths. Now in the next section, the story pretty much repeats. If we have a look at the lines, once again, we can see that I started my steering input a fraction of a second too late. That was not good to set up a corner properly on the way into the corner. Because my entry was not right, I had to slow down more in the middle of the corner. And as a result, I was losing time on the way out. And you can clearly see those differences straight away. And this is exactly why this tool is so powerful. That loss of speed and that compromised line on the way into the corner turned into a much bigger difference on the way out of the corner. And I had to slow down more just to make the corner, simply because my entry was not correct. And always think about the entry, not really the exit, because the entry decides how good the exit will eventually be. And just because of that poor entry in turn one, I was already losing just about half a second and we are not even halfway there. We are only a couple of corners in. And in the next section, the same issue showed up again. And my main problem was the line. I turned in too late because I was trying to prepare for a better exit, which did not work. But what I did not account for was how well the car naturally rotates. And because of that, I was losing time on the way in and a little bit on the way out of the corner. I was still gaining on the way out, but not as much. And the gap was already six tenths and it's definitely not great. Overall, the lap is not bad, but there are definitely a few areas where I was losing a significant amount of time. And one of those areas is definitely a chicane. Here, you can clearly see the difference in approach and of course, my line that I took. And you can carry a lot more speed on the way out of the corner. And unfortunately, I prioritized my entry and gained a bit of time on the way into the corner, but then lost a significant amount of time on the way out. And this is exactly why you should always think in terms of sections, not just individual corners. And by this point, I was already almost a full second down. And after that, I quickly realized that I needed to change most of my lines. And going into turn 9, I lost another tenth and a half. I mean, we can also have a look at the line that I was taking and it was not really close to the one that I actually should have been taking. And just by looking at the lines, you can clearly see that I was losing the rear end, which was extremely difficult to manage with this car. And honestly, everything with this car was really challenging to get right. And the final technical section after was a real test for me. 
But the problem was that I had to improve my lines through the entire section. And even though I cut the first corner correctly, I did not get on the exit in the best way possible. So one mistake led to another. And unfortunately, because of the previous corner, I just couldn't connect the whole section right. And as I said before, one thing led to another. And unfortunately, the last corner was the most problematic one and you can clearly see the difference there especially on the way out of the section and looking at the whole lap the biggest issue for me was the racing line and that line determined exactly how much speed i could carry into the corner and unfortunately i think a lot of people underestimate how much the correct line can affect an entire lap and this clearly shows it now we need to slightly change the approach and you need just about 30 minutes of extra practice. You will probably notice that it really doesn't take that long to improve at that point because you already know the areas where you want to improve and you just simply need to put it into action. And when I say simply, I mean, it's not exactly simple, but the key is to understand the specific areas and just find improvement in those areas that we previously talked about. Now let's run 30 more minutes and see exactly what happens after that. After the initial analysis, I identified the areas where the biggest improvements could be made. And from there, I just focused on understanding the correct lines and, well, most importantly, avoiding overshooting the corners. And this is usually the most common issue that I see. A lot of people think that braking too early is the problem, but more often it is that braking too late is the issue. When that happens, you miss the optimal racing line. And sometimes not pushing right to the absolute limit is exactly what you need to improve your lap times. And as the lap work went on, I finally settled into something that was clearly better. I mean, it was not perfect, but it really didn't take me that long to do it. I mean, well under 30 minutes. I managed to improve by six tenths of a second. But now, instead of just looking at the lines and pretty much the obvious details here, we also need to understand exactly where that time was lost and potentially where we can find even more time. And once again, it was turn one. And to be fair, it was actually quite obvious. I simply needed to cut the curve a lot more without unsettling the car. And unfortunately, that was my issue. And because of that, I could not get back onto the power early enough or carry as much speed through the corner as... Well, my reference did. And you can also see that I had to start braking slightly earlier to make that corner. Because before that, I was actually braking too late, which meant that I carried too much speed into the corner and I could not turn in where I wanted to. And of course, prioritize my exit. And overall, in the next two corners, I really didn't lose that much time. I took a slightly different approach. I could say that on the entry, I really didn't get the prop racing line that I wanted, but I really didn't lose that much time. I only lost like 50 thousandths of a second and I prioritized my exit while he prioritized his entry. And you can clearly set in the difference on the way out of the corner. He gained a lot of time on the way in, but I started gaining on the way out of the corner, which is usually my priority. But in this case, it was actually a slightly wrong approach. But overall, in this whole section, I actually performed reasonably well. In the next corner, I made exactly the same mistake, but this time I focused on my braking inputs and yeah, again, it cost me big time. And you can see how braking too late can actually cost you time instead of gaining it. And because of that, I could not get back under the power early enough. The exit itself was decent, but I just lost too much time on the way into the corner and that's exactly what cost me. In the next chicane, it was once again clear that I needed to adjust my braking. This time, I was braking slightly too early, and that was not ideal. But it was still not an improvement that I wanted. I really wanted to show you how these subtle differences can make such a big impact. And over the course of only one lap, it does add up. If you make the same mistake 10 times and only lose a tenth, that's already one second by the end of the lap. And most of these mistakes kept repeating, but I just wanted to show you how important it is to pay attention to small details. Things like applying 20 or 30% more input can really make a big difference. The biggest issue, in my opinion, is when people put 
too much pressure onto the front tires by carrying too much speed into the corner and of course exceeding the limits of grip. And because of that, the exit suffers. You might gain a bit of time on the way into the corner, but you usually tend to lose a lot of time on the way out of the corner. And this graph clearly shows that. And these are the areas where a lot of people tend to lose time. And overall, the gap was still around a second, but it was already an improvement, which kind of gave me a pretty good benchmark on what I needed to do in order to improve. And that's exactly what I did. And to be fair with you, I put in a lot more work into my next lap and really started to analyze all of the details. And finally, I got the lines right and I found the right approach, especially through the chicane. And I focused on the areas where it was really important to cut the track and follow the proper racing line. And of course, use the correct gears. And on top of that, I adjusted my corner speeds. It was still not perfect, but I knew I had a lot more in me. But this was still an improvement. And this part of the process took the most. Probably more than 30 minutes and the whole process just about an hour or potentially a little bit less. By the end of it, I had brought my lap time to just about 4 tenths of my reference. And that result put me in the top 20 in the world, which I think it was actually a pretty solid outcome. And I mean, this is the point where I just stop, take a deep breath and just look at the results. And the lap time definitely improved. I found the areas that needed work and I applied all of those changes. Now comes the difficult part, repeating this process again and again. And I need to analyze my lap time once again or a million more times because of course I could go faster. I mean, I definitely could go faster. Then we just repeat the process and instead of just explaining how this works over and over again, I think it's best that you try it for yourself. And of course you can let me know the results down below. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video and if you have any questions, please let me know down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.